I've got to seam seal this tent, but why? Why? Okay, so I know I've got to do it. This is the rather excellent Nortent Vern 2. But there's other tents here, such as the Simon Makalu 2 and the Exped Mars Extreme. And I've never had to seam seal those. And the Scarp 1, I had to. So this led to me thinking, what are the difference between these tents? And I thought I'd, as always, share some of my learning journey with you here. So let's get these tents out and we'll talk about the material differences and why manufacturers demand that you seam seal some tents and others, you're, you can get away. And in this video, I'm going to go on to actually seam seal this tent and I'll give you some tips and tricks. Okay, that's the tent pitched. As I said, this is the Nor Tent Vern 2. If you want to see some of my other videos on this new tent, have a look above here. Now, the basic thing about the tents we're talking about is they're all nylon. And I've laid out a few here to uh, compare differences between them. So we're not talking about the cheaper polyester tents that are like the beach camping type of flimsy tents these are all nylon and the intrinsic difference is is if they're siliconized how many sides are siliconized on and that affects their ability to tape the seams and the thickness of the material so let's start off on the end with the Xped Mars 2 Extreme now this tent is siliconized on both sides and I haven't had to tape the seams. But what Exped say is that when they stitch the seams, they use jets to cool the needles to make a very fine hole. So a hot needle will create a larger hole and the thread that they use is nylon with a cotton core. And that means when it gets wet there's a fine hole and that thread will expand to fill the gap which doesn't let any water in so it's a waterproof seam that apparently doesn't require taping but afterwards you could actually seam seal it uh, if you like and a point on taping is they're unable to tape siliconized nylon because it's just too slippy. Now I've read that Vaude have a proprietary means of doing that but it's not readily uh, available and Hilleberg actually used the same method of cold needle sewing with an expanding thread so they shouldn't need seam sealing. Now next along here is the Simond Makalu T2 now this tent you'll see on the inner, it's very hard to see, actually has taping there. And this is a siliconized outer, so that gives good water repellency. But inside it is PU or polyurethane coated. And that makes it a less, less sort of silky inner and they're able to tape it. So. Some of the benefits of that is it's easier and uh, cheaper to manufacture, but a negative is over time that this coating will come off and we've all seen it where the tape starts to dry and fray and come off. Certainly I've had a tent recently where that happened on the footprint uh, after two years of use and I had to send it back. So it's got a limited life and it requires a lot more care as well. Now you should always very carefully dry and put away your siliconized tent but I think you've got to go to the 
umpteenth degree with a PU coated and taped tent because they're very sensitive to UV light and moisture and that'll help it to degrade faster. And then next we come on to the Tarp Tent Scarp 1. Now this I believe is a 20D nylon, siliconized on both sides and it is not taped of course, being siliconized nylon and it's a, a very light 20D material and I've had to seam seal this and you can see compared to the X bed that it's a kind of like open seam. Let's try and find a bit of a, a main fly seam there. You can see the edge isn't as well butted over as the X bed one. And the crucial difference but as far as I can tell, and correct me if I'm wrong because I'm learning as I go with this, is the tents that require seam sealing, like this top tent Scott 1 and the Nor tent and a lot of the uh, 3FUL Lanshan type, they're all 20D siliconized nylon. So I wouldn't recommend going lighter than that for a tent, but I think that uh, to make a lightweight tent like that, the technology and difficulty required to make that seam waterproof just by stitching alone becomes much, much harder. Now, the X bed along at the end here is 40D nylon, uh, and that's a heavier nylon, like a lot of the Hillebergs, so it makes it easier to actually to butt over those seams to make them waterproof. So. Correct me if I'm wrong, uh, I would like to know kind of like more about this because I've got the rather necessary but tedious task of seam sealing this tent. So next I'm going to talk about materials required and what kind of preparation you should do and we'll get on with it. So what will you need? The first thing is lots of time, no disturbances. The second thing is a bomber excellent forecast and then you'll need seam sealer this one is branded Siltec and some other brand available is the McNet seam grip and sill the brushes that come with them are very very stiff and practically useless I would recommend you use a nice soft bristle brush. I've got a thick one and a fine one here. Uh, I'm going to dilute this with white spirit in this wee pot here. Uh, I won't give you mixtures, but about one part spirit to three parts silicon or thinner to make a nice thick paint that won't run but is runny enough. This stuff tends to be much too thick on its own and it's just gloopy. And next plenty of kitchen roll and then another pot for some more white spirits because you will have little accidents and you will need to wipe it off and then when you're lying in the tent if you haven't got any bits off you if you've got shiny splodges if you're like me it'll just annoy you. There's lots of uh, guides out there on the, on the internet and manufacturers own the, the, uh, videos of them putting the silicon on but I tend th to think that they're far too slapdash for the most part and uh, do a little bit of a ham-fisted job so I think you can do a better job of doing this uh, on your own. So the first thing that's required to do is to remove the tent inner in this case that was nice and quick to do, just took a minute. As regards tent preparation, you want to make sure it's nice, nicely pitched and uh, I'm going to get a soft cloth along there, I'm going to wipe along all the seams. If the tent looked really grubby and dirty, I would be using a damp cloth and going all over it, but this is uh, pretty clean really, just one or two bits of dust. And then the other thing I would do is spend five minutes to think about where all the key seams are. And with this tent it's required that you start on the inside first and then do the outside. So the key seams of course are going to be where the poles are uh, and it's quite nicely illustrated here. The vestibule areas 
along the centre there and then along these end centre poles. And then when I've done the inside, I'll be going on to the outside. See what I mean about this being far too thick. So it's recommended you wear gloves when you do this, but if you're like me, you wear them for five minutes and then just kind of like chuck them off. So that's a nice sort of thick paint there that's not too drippy. Yeah, good. So I'm just going carefully along the seam, one section at a time, making sure there's a good application. Kind of hard to see, but and systematic is the key. And then I'm going to go over the same section using my smaller brush and actually get just under the edge there. Can you see that? Where the seam is just lifting a little. So this is the same section on the outside. I'm being careful to a nice straight line but cover all the stitch marks you can see if you're going to do this properly why you need lots and lots of time to do it I just want to pay special emphasis to the stress points here this is where the crossing poles attached just to get all in that all over that stitching and when I come to do these sections here around the pole sleeve Again, I'll pay special attention like underneath here to these stress points and I might even put uh, a second coating on this Dyneema section there. But I'm just going to go over and wipe this off now. It will dry clear and mostly invisible but I like it to be neat from the start. I've done all this section now and I've done all the pole sleeve and now I'm just feeling under this edge here and I'm going to go along right under that edge. You're getting plenty on there. Can you see the brush disappearing underneath there? That's what I want. So, quite hard to do. Not too much there. But it's important to make a dam on the inside. In the What's worthwhile remember when you're doing this as well is make sure that you kick over your little container with white spirit a few times. Probably get on your socks and shoes. So, you can see a section now that's pretty much dry faint glaze on there and there's a bit I've just done that's still looking wet I need to tidy that up a little bit so the other thing that it's worth doing a really good job with this is we know that siliconized nylon is stronger and the same applies to the seams of your tent so a good layer of silicon in the seams and on the stitching will make it stronger less obvious one is the back of the pole here I'm just pushing that open there so I can actually see the stitches and then just going along with a fine brush. Wow, it's a lovely day and it's a good job. I've got to leave it for 24 hours to dry when I've finished and I've used now a whole tube and two thirds of this so I'd have two tubes ready. Some people use the pure silicon caulk but and it'll all go hard anyway, so why not just buy the, the proper stuff that's a little bit neater and easier. So that's it finished. I must confess my application quality wasn't quite as good on this second half, but I'm confident it'll be waterproof now. So I'm just going to go back over to check any parts I've missed. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I certainly haven't enjoyed the last two hours, but it's a necessary evil doing this, and you may as well do a good job of it if you've got to do it. And it helps you to make and it make you feel like you're an intrinsic part of your tent care, just like all the flies that landed on it are now an intrinsic part of, this, of the seams. So don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll be really interested to hear if you've got any tips, tricks, or other knowledge to share about seam sealing your tent or generally about waterproofing tents. It's a necessary and interesting subject in my opinion and I'll share some links below regarding some of the sites that I've been on that talk about materials and proofing and seam sealing. Thanks very much.